This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by lynda.com, the unparalleled online video training library. For a free 10-day unlimited trial, visit lynda.com slash macvoices. And by iChart Magazine, putting Apple and tech news in focus. Subscribe in iTunes or find out more at iChartMag.com. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is a talk of the Mac community. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, I, I'm really excited about this particular interview. This time, of course, we have Mr. Joe Kissel. Uh, we all know and love Joe. Joe, great to have you back, as always. Uh, nice to be here, Charlie. No, um, Ch Ch Chuck. Right? Chuck, yeah, Chuck. Yeah, Sorry. yeah. I don't answer um, to Charlie. But this time, we get to talk about the very first book that you are publishing from the Joe of Tech website. And it is... Joe on Tech, yes. Joe on Tech dot net. Dot net. Right. Got to get that right. Um, and this one is Backing Up Your Mac, a, a Joe on Tech guide. Right on. So congratulations, so, first off, on the very first you. book. The, on the new site, the very first book. Now let's talk about wh how this is all happening and, and what it means. Sure. Um, if anyone has listened to me on your show in the past, if you listened very, very carefully, you might on just one or two hundred occasions uh, have heard me mention the topic of backups. Um, it's, it's like my thing. You know, this is, this is what I keep coming back to over and over again because I can, because I have backups. Um, backups, backups, backups. This is like my, my cause. If there's, you know... There are lots of things you can do to make your life better and more secure uh, and to, to, to help yourself when you're using your Mac. But man, backups are like the thing. If you don't do anything else, have good backups. So uh, I have written quite a lot of books about backing up your Mac. I wrote one back in like 2004 or something, Take Control of Mac OS X Backups, and then that had a few spin-offs. There was one, when Time Machine came out, there was one that was that was mainly about using Time Machine for whatever, like Leopard, I think, was, was when that was introduced. And then, you know, d the book kept sort of going in different directions, and we'd, we'd split and merge and combine and rename and so forth. But, but basically, I've done quite a, quite a few different books for take control on the, the topic of Mac backups, uh, as well as many you know Mac World articles and tidbits articles and so forth, uh, it's it's probably the the single topic about Macs that I am most passionate about. And uh, so now I have my own book on this topic, and um, and and thereby hangs a tail. <laughs> so those of you who 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 caught me on the last Mac Voices that I was on, where I was talking about Joe on tech. Um, may may have heard me say that uh, you know I, I write so many take control books that that take control can't sort of keep up with me. And uh, six months ago or so, we you know I was I was talking with Adam and Tanya about you know I have I have so many so many books and more coming out all the time and and there will continue to be more take control books by me. Um, but I was looking at my list of like okay here are all the books that have have really gone out of date. Maybe it was because of Yosemite that they're out of date, or some of them even you know they haven't weren't even updated for Mavericks, um, or maybe it's just that stuff in the outside world has changed, and so even though the information is still good, it's not quite current. Um, or maybe I've just gotten so much feedback from readers that I'd really like to expand, enhance whatever the the, the material uh, to 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 be more useful. So I had this whole long list of books that that were just. They, they needed a refresh. They needed a new edition. Um, and as as you may know, we've been working through that list. You know, a new new version of the book on passwords, new version of the book on online privacy, and new version of the command line book, and so forth. But um, we, we're just all looking at this list and trying to figure out when these various updates could could possibly appear in the take control schedule. And Adam and Tanya are like. We're, we're out of space. We can't. We can't. We can't fit them all. There's just no time. Um, so, if you want to update your book on backups, as well as a few of your other titles, uh, maybe maybe next year, <laughs> maybe the year after. It depends on you know what Apple throws at us. And I'm like, but but I love that book. <laughs> and it's not just that I love that book, but 
the 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 backups book over its many different you know titles and, and incarnations has been the best selling take control title ever. Many 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 thousands of people have have bought this book and have have told me how useful and important and valuable it is. And so uh, this book, along with a few others, uh, I just felt like I, I I need to update it. It's really important to to keep it current and keep it available. And um, if if Take Control doesn't have space in their schedule to do it, what if I adopted those books and I published them myself? Um, and so we, we had long talks about this, uh, Adam and Tanya and I, and we decided that's exactly what we would do. In order to keep the, the material current and alive and for sale, um, I, I, would, I would take over the books myself. So um, the first one is Backing Up Your Mac. And I, I treated it as though I were making a new edition of the Take Control book. So I started with the old one. Thoroughly, you know, I made thousands of changes. Uh, I added new material. I took out material that doesn't work anymore. I reorganized, reworked things, just totally revamped it so it's absolutely up to date for Yosemite as well as for Mavericks. Talks about all the latest software and hardware. It's utterly current. uh, Addresses reader questions. Addresses my list of oh, I should really talk about this. And. I hired my own editor to edit the book, and I ho- hired my own tech reviewer to uh, tech review. Um, Dan Frakes, who you, you all probably know, has, has done the tech review of the book. So um, it will have a new title. I mean, it, it no longer the title no longer includes the words take control of. It's now a Joe on Tech Guide. Uh, it has a new cover. It has a new interior layout, uses a different font, uses different, you know, different style guide and so forth. So I'm trying to really to make it my own and make it sound more like me and fit my own brand as opposed to the Take Control brand. But it is basically an evolution of that of that same title, uh, very much with the blessing of, of Take Control. And it's my way of, of taking some of my favorite and, and readers' favorite, most useful Take Control content and and breathing new life into it. I, I love I love the way this has evolved and developed. I love the fact that it's not competition with Take Control. I love the fact that it's an evolution of the title across uh, what imprints, I guess, is the proper phrase in the publishing industry. So we we get the, a, a successor book. We get the same quality. We get the same author. But there's no there's no animosity. There's no, no there's no drama here. No, no, there, there really is no drama. It's, it's, you know, as I, as I talked to Adam and Tanya about this, it, it quickly became evident that this is a, a sort of win-win-win situation. So, I, I win because I, you know, have this, this, this book that now can, can sort of help me with my own brand and it, you know, and make some money. Uh, they win too because they get to resell the book. So you will still be able to find this new book on the Take Control website in their catalog. Of course, I would be just as happy for you to buy it directly from me, but you can buy it from them too. And that's great because you buy it from them, then we both make some money. But also, uh, readers win, customers win, because due to reasons, <laughs> just just because of, of the lower overhead um, involved in making my own book as opposed to Take Control, I can charge less for it. So I charge... I'm charging half of what the old take control book cost, and yet I'm still making essentially uh, the same amount of money. So it, it really is like, you know, win, win, win. And um, that's, that's, I, I just love those situations where, where there's, there's, there's no, there, there are no hurt feelings. There is no competition. It's just, we've, we've found a different approach that makes everybody happy. If the world had more of that, but you know, that's, that's a whole nother topic. Yeah. Um, so, so this is the background of the book. This is how it's going to be moving forward, the new imprint and all. But backups, Joe, do we really have new stuff to talk up talk about with backups? We do. Uh oh. So, <laughs> okay. One of the things, um, one of the things I've done in the last couple of iterations of, of the Take Control version of this book is sort of say, all right, um, here's a here's a chapter early in the book that you should come back to every year or so. Because 
first of all, your needs are going to change. You know, you, you, you create, you set up some backup system. It works great. Now, time passes and you realize, you know, I've gotten more into video or digital photography or my family has grown or something has happened. Now I've got more data I need to back up. So maybe you need to reevaluate or, hey, there are new uh, hard drives that hold more data or new cloud services that are interesting or prices have dropped or there situations have things happen in the world either with the data you have to back up or the way you might choose to back them up that might make you reconsider your strategy from time to time. So I sort of say you can skip this chapter the first time through but every year or so why don't you come back and just think about this. Do I have more data? Are there new gadgets? Are there, you know, what, are there situations that have changed that I'd like to take advantage of? Um, maybe what made the most sense for me a year ago doesn't make um, as much sense now or something something new does. So that's part of it. And then another part of that chapter is, is me sort of listing what is new. Well, you know, hard drive capacities are going up and there are you know, new Drobo models, and there are um, new cloud services, and prices have dropped. Like there, there are a whole, whole lot of things that have happened. Hey, we have Macs now. Well, a Mac with a USB C port. That's new, um, and um, some you know more Macs with Thunderbolt two ports, more Macs with USB three ports. On the other hand, you know, optical drives are are pretty much history, and. Uh, SD card slots are becoming uh, rarer, and so as as Apple shifts, you know they they decide to take advantage of new technologies, decide to let old technologies uh, go. Um, your your decision matrix might change, and another thing that might happen is you really want this you know hot new MacBook, but it doesn't have so much online so so much uh, storage built in. You know, your, your iMac might have three terabytes, but maybe your new MacBook has less than one. So um, if you want a MacBook Air or uh, a MacBook or something that has uh, less storage than you're accustomed to, um, the fact that you have less storage as opposed to more could be a deciding factor in how you approach uh, technology choices. So I, I talk about, uh, you know, the new hardware, the new software, the new um, cloud services. Um, one of the things I talk about is a, th this existed before, but I didn't really get into it in much detail. There's, there's an increasing trend for software that is primarily intended to make a bootable duplicate, like a clone of your entire hard disk. Um, there's, there's an increasing uh, a trend f to give you the option of not just doing a straight copy. You do the straight copy, but then any files that uh, you have new versions of, or that you know you deleted these files to to put the old versions or the 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 you know the pre-deleted version of the file uh, in a special folder to set it aside. So in a sense, you get some of the benefits of a version backup, along with the benefits of you have a drive you can boot off of. And that's a relatively recent concept. It has some pros and cons, and I talk about all those in the book. But that's just an example of sort of a. A, a more modern approach to backing up that uh, I think readers would really like to know about. Yeah, I, the, the very last meeting of our user group for before our summer break, we talked a lot about backups. Figured it was a good time to do that so that you know, over the summer maybe people will implement it, not not have to worry about recovering things if they lose it, and that way they won't be coming to our meetings to try to figure out how to do it. And th some of that topic came up, the idea that especially the time machine, the concept of version backups with time machine and and maybe to a lesser extent for backups, Dropbox, as opposed to just a straight clone. And so, yeah, this, this is interesting. And and now we have a new class of software coming out that's that's sort of combining the two or giving you part part of the two. Right. So, so my going way, way back to the earliest take control book on backups, my, my three principles have, have always been and continue to be, you need version backups, version backups, uh, a clone and offsite storage. You, you really need those three elements because each one of those does something important for you that the others don't. So if you, if you just clone your disc, that's great. But if you don't, also store old versions of files, you might accidentally delete something, then you update your clone and whoops, uh, now I can't, I can't get that, that old file back anymore. There are a lot of different problems that, that version backups solve that clones don't and vice versa. 
And even if you have fantastic version backups and fantastic clones sitting in a hard drive at your desk, um, if, you know, lightning strikes, your house burns down, your house is broken into, hurricane, tidal wave, tornado, whatever, um, your backups can be wiped out along with your main, uh, you know, your, your Mac's main drive. And so you want to have another copy of your data someplace that isn't right next to your Mac, which may be cloud storage, or it may be you take another hard drive and put it in a safe deposit box or whatever. But, but however you spin it, those three basic components, version backups, clones, and offsite storage continue to be really, really important. It's just that now, oh, look, maybe you can combine two of these in one. Um, and so different sort of takes on how you approach these, these goals um, as, as, as situations change and, and new hardware and software and approaches become available, I, I talk about them in this book. This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by lynda.com, the unparalleled online video training library. Get a full 10-day free trial at lynda.com slash macvoices. Do you want to learn something new? Do you need to learn something new? Maybe your skills at Excel need polishing, or you need to learn database management with FileMaker, or website building and management with Dreamweaver or Squarespace. You can learn all of that and much, much more at lynda.com. They have over 3,000 courses about topics you really want to learn about. Get a first look at Apple's Photos app, or learn programming for iOS 8. Get up to speed with Lightroom or Adobe Premiere. Lynda.com has the best authors teaching you those subjects. Not people you never heard of, but names you know and trust. And if you don't know them, just Google them, and you'll find out just how qualified they are to teach you about their subjects. But Lynda.com is a lot more than just a listing of videos and topics. One of my favorite Lynda.com features are the 10-minute tips. Not only do I get to sample new topics and instructors in short order, but I pick up useful tips and tricks at the same time. And I try to make at least a weekly pass through the What's New section to find out about the latest courses and updates posted to lynda.com. That helps me stay current with what's out there and to add to my personal playlist. Did I say playlist? lynda.com lets you set up your own playlists so that you can watch things in the order you wish or choose from their pre-curated lists that help guide you through the topics you're interested in. lynda.com has so many options, it's hard to name them all. That's why you need to sign up for a free 10-day trial at lynda.com slash macvoices so you can explore the videos, watch as many as you like during the trial period, and explore everything that lynda.com has to offer. That's 10 days of free unlimited learning, unlimited videos, and unlimited exploring at lynda.com slash macvoices. Sign up today, sample their over 3,000 courses, and learn something new. Thanks to lynda.com for their support of Mac Voices. Over the, our discussions over the years, really, it's hard to believe, but over the years, I know some of your favorite things have changed, services, software, and all have changed your picks. What's your current pick for the gold standard of, 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 of hardware, of software, of services? Well, um, I, I would tell you what I do, but it's sort of a do what I, do what I say, not what I do situation. Uh -oh. and, and that's not because I, not because I, I think I'm doing anything wrong or anything, um, you know, unsafe, but rather the opposite. I have like a zillion different backups. I have way more backups than any ordinary person needs. Um, and I, I think I really, you know, I, I, I do it to excess, but I have credibility to maintain here. So if, if I ended up losing a file and like I'm the guy who's written all these books on backups, you know, that would be a problem for me professionally. So I, I, I overdo it. But um, the, the core, I'll say the core of my plan or the, the most important pieces, um, I, uh, I use Carbon Copy Cloner to create a bootable duplicate of the main startup disk in, in each of my two main Macs. So I'm, I'm standing in front of an iMac now. Over here is my MacBook Pro. Um, these are the two Macs uh, that I use most frequently and where I actually generate interesting new uh, materials. So those, I, I have uh, Carbon Copy Cloner clones. Um, and on my, my, my iMac, because this is the one where like it's powered on all the time and connected to external storage all the time, I actually update my clone twice a day. Uh, so. I used to recommend once a week, 
I, I do mine twice a day, and and that just it, it costs me nothing, and it means that if I have a problem, uh, I will at most the absolute worst case is I would lose twelve hours of work. So um, so I, that's what I do for for clones. Um, for version backups, I do two things. I have Time Machine uh, backing up to a local hard drive, and I also use Crash Plan. Um, and Crash Plan is also backing up to two destinations. It's backing up to a Drobo, which is right here, and it's also backing up to the cloud. So, um, and I and I have other backups besides those. But but that's sort of the the basic. Is I have I have a carbon copy cloner for duplicates. And I have a combination of Time Machine and Crash Plan for the version backups. And Crash Plan also gives me the offsite storage. Um, I don't think most people really need to have both Time Machine and Crash Plan. Um, they, you could pick one or the other. Um, I, I go into in, in the book why I still bother with Time Machine since I already have another form of, of version backups. And it's basically for convenience. Um, there are uh, some respects in which Time Machine makes it easier to restore uh, certain kinds of data than, than Crash Plan would. One, of, one example is mail. So if you use Apple Mail for email and you accidentally delete a message or delete a folder, you know, mailbox, um, you can go into Time Machine from within mail and, and search for that thing that you lost and then restore it right within mail. Whereas if you, if you use some external program to back it up, you would have to go search, you know, I don't know what that file is called, that little, you know, uh, you know, some weirdly named file deep in my uh, library folder that, that held that particular message. So even finding the content to restore could be really tricky. And then you'll get back like basically a text file that contains your email message, but it won't be in your email program where you need it to be. So it's just more awkward. So um, for, for certain things like that, I find uh, restoring data with Time Machine to be better. And I, I just like the convenience of it. Um, but I, I actually feel more secure uh, with Crash Plan, uh, partly because I get both the local and the cloud storage. And Partly because, you know, what can I say? Time Machine has a history of being flaky. Yeah, yeah, and I've, I've, under the heading of full disclosure, I use Crash Plan as well. Uh, I've been very happy with it. There was a time that I, I at least at the office, I used another service. We're not going to slander anybody, but I had a very bad experience right at the moment that you need it most, and that that says it all. You know, that's yep. that's why you have these services, and when they don't perform, when you need them to, so. Just my, my two cents I'll throw into the conversation is test your backups, especially your online backups. And how. Um, I, I, certainly, I certainly emphasize this point in my book. Don't, don't trust blindly. Uh, so many people have said, oh, well, I'll just turn on Time Machine or I'll turn on whatever and let it run. And then right at the moment they need it, they realize, oh, it didn't run last week or for the last two weeks or however long because and it didn't like i wasn't aware that it wasn't running or it ran but it somehow skipped the important file that i need so you absolutely want to verify your backups um last week i was at this conference where i was um i i uh, i met a guy who runs a company that that is a that it includes backup monitoring so you can actually pay them money and they will monitor your time machine crash plan carbon copy cloner backblaze whatever backups to make sure that they are running when they should be running and backing up the files they should be and if they if this external service notices that they're not running they will alert you right away um i i think that all backup software should have that built-in capability, but you know if the software isn't even running in the first place, then yeah. you're out of luck. So, um, so that's that's the kind of new thing I mentioned in the book is you you don't want to take any chances. Yeah, at the risk of turning this into a crash plan uh, ad, one of the th one of the features you can turn on is email notifications of either you know when you're when you're not being backed up or what the status of your backup is every day, every other day. That, and I've, I've come to rely on those because once in a while something has gone wrong and I get an email that says, oh, you haven't backed up for three days. You know, what? Okay, okay got, <laughs> that, that moves to the head of the list because you gotta, you got to have the backups. That's right. So, Joe, so, something you said about off-site, uh, and, and we've also talked about that a lot in the past, but something I don't think I've ever asked you. 
what are the physical aspects of storing a hard drive off-site that you should be aware of? And I'm, whether we're talking about you know the little portable drives or a regular raw drive that you might drop into um, uh, one of the drive toasters, as they call them. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm actually glad I will answer your question, but I'm glad you mentioned the little portable drives. Uh, here's here's one. Um, I have I don't know six or seven. Uh, little drives, yep. various models from manufacturers. This is one, um, this is a Seagate GoFlex, and you can actually, um, right now, this is a Thunderbolt um, sled, that, so I get a Thunderbolt port, uh, but I can actually pop this off and um, pop this on, and, okay, now it's a USB 3 drive. So, um, so you know, if you have Macs with different connectors and, and you, you want to, you know, need FireWire, or you need Thunderbolt or whatever, um, this is this is really cool. I love these little drives. I mean, they're they're small. They're shirt pocket size. This one uh, holds. Uh, I think this is this. I think this is a one terabyte. But I have they, you know, they come in you know one and a half, two terabytes, and so on. Um, I love the little drives because they don't need external power. I don't have to have a, a wall wart. I don't have to have uh, you know an extra cable. I just plug them into <clears throat> to USB or Thunderbolt. And they work. And they're also super, super portable. So if I wanted to take a drive to someplace else and, and rotate them once a week or, or however often, it would be way, way, way easier to take this than to unplug, you know, a Drobo or, or some massive external hard drive that has its own power supply and so forth. Um, so I like it for the space savings in my cramped office. I like it for the uh, the con the portability the convenience I can take one of these on the road with me and, and do do backups uh, on the road um, the the lack of cables and just um, just the, the convenience so whether you are using one of these or something else uh, for your for your backups if you are physically rotating drives off site the, the the two big things you need to avoid are heat and vibration so um, your car is a lousy place to keep a backup drive. <laughs> it would never have right. occurred to me. <laughs> um, oh, it, it occurs to some people, like, well, I got to keep it outside my house, and I want it to be in a safe place, so, oh, you know, my glove compartment or whatever, my trunk. <laughs> well, apart from the fact that those places are going to get hot and they're going to have vibration, it's probably easier to break into your car or to steal your car than it is to break into your house. So it's really not a good place to keep backups. Now, if you have like, you know, you, you have backups of your home computer, maybe you have, a, you know, a locked drawer in your office and you can, you can take your backups from home to the office. Or maybe you can keep them at a neighbor's house, a relative's house, a friend's house, uh, someone that you trust, um, as long as they have good, you know, physical security. Um, <clears throat> you, if you have a safe deposit box, of course, you can take it to the bank put in the safe deposit box, it will be pretty cool and dark and dry and vibration free in there. The problem with the safe deposit box is it's a hassle. Um, it's, it takes, you know, time and effort and, and inconvenience to, to get things in and out of there. Um, but you know, if you're, if your data is super sensitive and you don't have another environment where like there's just another house or an office someplace I can keep it where I, where I, where I trust the person, sure. Safe deposit box. But really, it's 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 the the inconvenience of physically moving drives around. Not to mention the expense of buying the extra drives um, that that drives a lot of people to use online storage. So you know th there is CrashPlan, Backblaze, and many other providers. Um, if you use CrashPlan, there is also the possibility of doing something called a peer-to-peer -peer backup. So the idea with that is. Um, you have an external drive connected to your Mac. I have an external drive connected to my Mac. And we agree to offer each other some storage space on our respective drives. I back up to you, you back up to me. Everything's encrypted, so I can't see the files you're putting on my external drive, and you can't see the files that I'm putting on your drive. You're simply donating some of your space and bandwidth to me. And what's great about that is you don't have to pay crash plan for it. We're this is just between us, and we pay for our usual internet connection, but it's not it's not the cloud. Um, our our data isn't in somebody's else's somebody else's data center. Nobody else has access to it. 
and we're not paying a monthly fee for it. So that's there are there are ways that you can back up your data remotely without having to use the cloud, without having to have, you know pay a lot of money, and without having to worry about security. How about well, again, with the, with the small drives, you don't have a little problem. But if you're if you're storing raw drives, should you go out and try to get some of the plastic cases for the drives, or is there uh, a, a more economical solution to that? Because you know, you even though let's just say a safe deposit box or a, a file drawer at the office or whatever is is probably going to be re relatively clean, you still I mean, you're still talking about a hard drive, and you need to give it a little bit of care. Yeah, in the past when I was using raw hard drives, like I had an enclosure where you can pop out the mechanism right. and you're just taking that with you. I had like these little silicone sleeve kind of things they fit in just just to protect them against like dust and vibration. Um, uh, yeah, something like that. Um, if obviously if it's just uh, an entire portable enclosure and you're taking the whole thing, then that's not so much of a worry. But if you are if you are dealing with bare drives, it's it's a good idea to give them some extra love. Okay, so it sounds like we have a brand new book here that's been fully updated. And, and again, this is just one of those books that it's necessary. I mean, I don't know how often you plan to be revisiting it, but my perception is that this has been revisited pretty consistently on about a year, year and a half basis. Yeah, uh, if, if I had to guess, I would, I would imagine that um, I, will, I will update it no less frequently than every year. I don't know what's going to happen with OS 10 10.11. I assume, because this has been Apple's pattern for a few years, that around about October there will be an OS 10 10.11 something something California, you know, and um, maybe maybe whatever that uh, update contains will really change the backup story. Maybe Time Machine will act differently or have new features, or maybe things will stop working or there'll be new backup programs. I have no idea. If if the backup story changes a lot when that new operating system comes out, I will probably update the book sooner. Um, but uh, at, at, at the very minimum, I would imagine that it would be updated every year or so. Um, and I... To, to the extent that I can pull off the technology, I will try to do pretty much the same thing that uh, that happened with Take Control Books, which is that relatively minor updates will be free, and if I have a major, major revision, a totally new uh, version, then there will be an upgrade fee. Well, that's, I, I mean, what a great value. You know, that, that's all there is to it. And I think the, one of the last times you were here, we talked about security and passwords and those kind of things, and I said that those were some of the most important books you've you've written. This has got. This probably is tied with it. Yeah. Well, it really is an aspect of security. Um, I I always tell people if you have if you encounter a security problem, you know you have malware or someone has broken into your computer or hacked your network or whatever. I mean, very often the solution to your security problem is to wipe off your hard drive and restore it from a backup. Um, it is a uh, backup is the ultimate undo. It is, the, it is the way of, of correcting, fixing, overcoming mistakes that you have made, um, harm that other people have caused you, um, malfunctioning software, your cat running across the keyboard, thieves, hackers, like whatever. It is, it is the ultimate undo. I, I can't, I can't uh, overemphasize its, um, its role as a security feature. So uh, if, if, again, if you take no other action to protect your Mac, at least back it up. And, uh, you know, I, I have to say, th this is a long book, okay, it's, it's about 200 pages long, but um, I am very careful to, to sort of, you know, chapter by chapter, explain at the very beginning whether or not you need to read this. <laughs> so there's like a quick start at the beginning that, that sort of outlines how, how you decide which aspects of this book are important to you. You do not need to read a 200 page book before you can get started. You might read 20 pages of it or 30. You might read this chapter and this chapter. Um, but I, I explain as you go through the book which aspects of it are applicable to you and which ones you can maybe ignore. But, uh, but the important thing is that you get started. Even if you have a less than ideal approach, like I might complain about Time Machine, but it is way, way better than nothing and it's super simple to set up. So if you, if, if you're like a path of least resistance person, just go, yeah, turn it on, turn something on, do some backups. And then when you have time, go back and read about some of your other options and maybe you supplement or maybe you change something later on, but, but do something right away. Definitely.
And I have an idea for Joe on Tech. Okay. I, I think we need T-shirts. Mm. I think we need Joe on Tech T-shirts, and the first one should be Backups, the Ultimate Undo. Backups, the Ultimate Undo. I, I kind of like that. I kind of like that, too. I want, I want the first T-shirt off the line. You have to have it printed on the back, though, right? Because... Well, I don't, I don't care where backups, you print it, but oh, backups. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> yeah. And of course, because needless to say, the the entire front of the shirt should be a big picture of me. I mean, okay. Obviously, uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay. Well, it may be obvious to uh, to, to to some people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Joe, you know, at the end of the day, we have to ask always about the price. We know where to go and get it, but uh, what's the price of uh, the new book? It's $9.99 because I'm one of those guys. Sorry. Um, I, you know, since since I'm selling these, th these books under my own label, my own brand, as opposed to somebody else's, um, I, I, I do need to squeeze out every last uh, sale and the... People who have, have investigated these things reliably say that for whatever stupid psychological reason, people are more likely to, to pay $9.99 than $10. So, fine, you can have your penny. <laughs> so, $9.99, you can buy it from joeontech.net. You can buy it from takecontrolbooks.com. Um, it will possibly not on day one, but as soon as I can possibly swing it, it'll be available from the iBookstore. It'll be available on amazon.com. Also, uh, not only in electronic forms, also in a print-on-demand version. So whatever form you want your data in, whatever device you want to read it on, including you know in your hands, um, you can do it. The, the print version will be a little more expensive. Um, but uh, joeontech.net, $9.99, backing up your Mac, a Joe on Tech guide. I hope you like it. That's, that's cheap insurance, Joe. That's cheap insurance to stay up to date and stay current with what the best options are. So, as always, thank you for all your efforts. Really appreciate it because I know this, these books don't just pop out fully formed. You, they, they, Not at they, all. They require a lot of research. They are an awful lot of work, but uh, I'm happy to do it, and I, I appreciate you having me on your show again. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. And we'll be back with yet another well book under one label or the other, along with who knows what else. So we'll see you again soon. Awesome. See you soon. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. We hope to see you again soon, too, as well. We've got a lot more interesting stuff coming. Joe will be back. A lot of our other friends will be back. And we're <clears> always <throat> looking for new people to introduce you to uh, so you get new Mac Voices uh, as well as some of the old ones. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and the Mac Voices blog. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date on all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Do more with your Apple tech by subscribing to the free Mac Voices magazine on Flipboard by visiting macvoices.com slash magazine. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.